Hey, this is Glendon, Cameron, and welcome to day 15. We are at the halfway mark of 30 days to $2,500. It's been very, very interesting. We've got one guy at 22 grand. Uh, I don't know where the other guy is, but he's probably breathing hot and heavy on his heels. And we've had several people cross the $2,500 mark. Day 15, two weeks. Very, very proud of that. So if you're one of those people, give yourself a hand, congratulations, and let's do more. So if you're new, I'm gonna give you the rules. Typically, I do the presentation, and if you have a question, just go ahead and ask your question, and when I come out of the presentation, I will answer your questions. And like I said, since this is, there's so many, because right now we're at 15 hours of content for those of you who want the recorded sessions, because this is always, this is always asked because we have new people. If you want the recorded sessions, you have to join 30 days to 2,500 bucks. So there's the Facebook group and there's the platform on Vidcaster. So I'll give you the directions to how to get into that stuff when I come out of the presentation. So with that, Let's jump into it. So if you're new, there's a lot of things that go on. And I also will require for you to get a sheet of paper, pen or pencil, and your calendar. You can use the calendar on your phone, your, your laptop, your iPad, whatever you have. Because these webinars are action-based. You have to do some stuff. There's going to be things required of you. Some of it's going to seem a little crazy. Uh, some of it's going to seem a little strange. But... Each day is designed to get you out of your comfort zone, to get you doing different things, to get you doing something that will make you more apt to push yourself to be successful. Now, this was from yesterday's because there, there's Think Fast and there's Task. There's all kind of stuff that goes on here. And uh, this one is going to take a little time, but for those of you who are new, you're going to convince a family friend. If you got kids, it's going to be super easy and it's going to even be fun. But you're going to go out and get some clown makeup and you're going to put this stuff on and you're going to do Facebook pictures with it. And then put in your Facebook uh, picture. Um, this is part of a course I'm taking. <laughs> Please give me your comments because I'm telling you a lot of this stuff is fun and it gets you out of your regular everyday normal life. Now, this is something else. I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. This is to prep your mind for success. Understand how you approach each day is very, very important. We're all human. You're going to have a day. You're just not going to feel it. It's just not going to be there. And that's not going to kill you because how many days are in the month? There's 30. So if 15 of those days you are hitting it, you're going to move forward. If 20 are hidden, you're going to move forward. If 25 are hidden, you know, there's going to be months, there's going to be weeks where it's just not going to happen. But when you look back into the year, the year is 365 days, and 200 plus are, you know, maybe, you know, you, you were hitting it, your, your year's going to be better, your life's going to be better, many things are going to be better. Now, this is day 15. We're going to talk about something that... You won't see in a lot of business courses, but it's very, very important. And I'm going to connect the dots for you so you know what this is and why I'm doing it. Because believe it, when you do this thing, when you learn these techniques, it's going to add power to your life. Because what I found out, you know, I discussed myself when I was living in that freaking boarding house and when I was homeless, uh, I wasn't a powerful person and it wasn't because I didn't have the ability. That wasn't it. I was stuck on the past. I was miserable. I was bitter. I was just totally a messed up puppy because my focus every day was on things that I could not change. Things that had happened. Couldn't go back. Didn't have a time machine. Couldn't go back and flip the lever and say, okay, we're going to reset the course of events. Nope. Couldn't do it. But I focused on it as if I had that power. And every day I took personal power, emotional energy, and I went outside, dug a hole and dumped it in that hole and then covered it up. 
no benefit whatsoever, none. Actually, I had created a power leak. So essentially, when you're doing that stuff, you are draining your power battery. You're draining your power source. And you feel that you are doing the right thing by being bitter, holding grudges, being mad. I hate them. You're hurting yourself. You really are. Now, being an entrepreneur is a lonely walk sometimes. Um, one of the things I've discovered time and time again is you must learn to manage you. Going to those those highs and those lows of being a person who's trying to start a business, you got your hustle, all of these things. Because when you learn how to make money and you take this course, you will, without having a job, you kind of make yourself an outlier in your in your circle. Now, for my circle and people I know, I know a lot of business owners. And that's something else that will happen as you walk on this journey. Your friends are going to change. And when I say change, if you have wonderful, good friends, they're not going anywhere. They're going to be there. But you're going to lose a lot of people who were superficial, just kind of hanging out there. Or more, not even really friends, just associates. And they're going to be replaced by people who have similar interests and passions that you do. So the sooner you facilitate this process because some people just like no i'm not gonna change the money's not gonna change it's not about changing the money you've changed your mind first and when you change your mental energy you change your spiritual energy so a lot of things change now this is part of my story and you know it may or may not be yours because everyone's on this road by themselves but i had to learn how to manage me i had to learn how I don't care if the world, if my personal world is on flames, that I still had to get up, go to the work. Uh, there's a few videos on YouTube where like I was just going through some serious emotional drama. And what I learned is pain is energy. It's bitter, it hurts, it keeps you up at night, but it's energy. And what I learned is when you take that energy and you commit alchemy, which is like turning lead to go, well, you turn pain to something positive, not necessarily joy. So when if you right now, there are many of you who are struggling. Many of you have got personal issues. There's things going on with your family. You have a lot of pain. You have a lot of issues. A lot of things are going on. So instead of sitting and commiserating with the pain, acknowledge your pain and deal with it and start taking that energy and start channeling it into something that's going to be a benefit to you. Now, this may or may not happen. It's happened to several entrepreneurs that I've known. Family will leave you until the money comes and they'll, and they'll be back. <laughs> so uh, frequently, your friends will become family. Um, the only way I can really explain this to it, like with my partner, Francine, I was talking to a cop and he was from New York and we were just talking. And he said, that's how I feel about my partner. He's like, we've been shot at together. And he's like, I'm married. I love my wife, but. You know, if I had to come up with a bunch of money for my partner and it may have like pissed her off, I still would have given the money to my partner because it was just a different kind of relationship. And even though these people will not be your blood family, they're going to be, you're going to probably, depending on what you're doing, unless your family is like really supportive and they kind of walk with you on this journey, you're going to find yourself bonding to people stronger than you did with your family. And some of you are going to have a wonderful family. And you're not going to have this issue. But many of you are going to go through this because, you know, the joke I tell, like with my own mother. So what you're really telling me is you still don't have a job. I bought that woman a car. And I still got that. So understand, being a digital cyber entrepreneur, being able to sit at home on your hind parts and make more money than they do going to work creates a lot of problems in families and relationships. So this goes back to you must learn to manage you. You must learn to be more forgiving, but we'll get to that. Now, this is something that's uh, a little different. As you live, you will fuck up more. Now, this is where things get a little dicey because mistakes make us feel bad. Uh, mistakes dampen self-esteem, but mistakes are good. Mistakes are awesome. Mistakes do many wonderful things for you. Now, this is what I've learned on my walk on this road. Is when I do something 
wrong and there's no intent to do wrong. It's just, hey, I misgaged or I didn't do the right thing or I didn't even do. The outcome isn't really that bad. But when I get on my evil horse and just do stuff that I know is like really wrong, <laughs> all kinds of calamity happens. So knowing that, I intentionally back away from that stuff. That's why I don't get into the YouTube fights and the, the I don't, because it just creates bad energy. But when you, what I'm trying to say to be more succinct is don't worry about making mistakes. Mistakes are going to happen. Mistakes will be part of your life. Um, mistakes will actually make you money, but more on that later. You got to learn that your intent, like you are married, right? So you got a family and you're trying to start this business and you're really, really trying to make a go of it and it doesn't work out. Your intent wasn't to harm the family, even though they did get harmed. And I've talked to guys who, and the family was just like they knew it was it didn't work out, but they wasn't bad or bitter because they knew the intent was right. So intent is more important than anything else. Now, here we are. More mistakes, more money. This has been the pattern of my digital entrepreneur career because, you know, that started July 17th, 2009. The more mistakes I've made, the more money I've made, the more I've learned because, yeah, mistakes, they're painful. They're, this is nothing fun. I'm not going to give you some soft sell that, oh, you know, you no, no, some of the things I've done, some of the mistakes I made, like when I went into that forum and freaking lost it, I really regret doing that. It's like, God, I shouldn't have did it. But, <laughs> but, there's a but, when I went in there and lost my mind, my book sales exploded. And it was kind of like, yeah, you know, was that a good thing? It's like, yeah, because I mean, I looked at the next day and my sales had like quadrupled after me going in there and acting like a nutcase. So it's still not something I'm proud of because I lost control, but I learned from it. Once again, you learn faster. You gain more experiences. And see, if you substitute mistake for experience, the word experience, well, that was an experience. It kind of takes some of the sting out of it, some of the, uh, you know, like when you get punched and you feel that sting, like, oh, it hurts. It takes a little bit out of it. But if you learn to push through this process, you're going to become more valuable as a person. The more value that you create in yourself, the more value other people will instill in you. If you are all stuck on the past, if you all like... If you do something bad and you get stuck on it forever, and I've seen this, and this is one of the things that I learned when I worked in the hospital. Sometimes we would have patients that were in a state of dementia and they would be having conversations with people. And so many times I could be wrong, but my read was they were trying to either apologize or they were trying to make uh, amends with someone. Like I remember this guy and he's like, Joe. Just want you to know, I'm so sorry. And the guy was just totally out of it. He was on, you know, he was just talking in a state of dementia. And I've heard these things and these stories and people just, and I, I just really think, and that I really, really feel, feel that they were more regretful of the things they didn't do than the mistakes they made in life. Because I, I heard a lot of angst and stuff with that. So that kind of helped me develop a personal philosophy of, what I'm going to do in life and what how I want to live because I'm not afraid to fail not to say not once again not to say that failing is fun it's a necessary process sometimes to make that forward leap but I will deal with my mistakes and move forward with a level of honesty and integrity so doing that has helped me tremendously and it'll help you because the more you know, the more you can do, the more valuable you will be as a person. Now, this is a big lesson. And this is something you got to learn how to do. You got to, because going back to the mistakes, you make mistakes, you feel bad. It kind of takes you out of your game a little bit. Your mojo may be gone for a bit. You have to go through this process of learning to forgive yourself where this goes back to intent. Now, like, when you're doing evil stuff, when you're just like, I'll give you an example. Um, there was someone that was coming after me hot and heavy last year this time. It was just ridiculous. And I actually found some stuff out about this person that I could have used online that was truthful. 
and I, and I was getting ready to do it too because I was like, because I have like what I call my cool off period. When something happens, like you, I'm human. I get pissed, I get mad, and I want to retaliate. And I was like, say, okay, well, this is what I'm thinking now, but I'm not going to do anything until maybe tomorrow or even next week. Like, if I'm really, really hot, I'll give it a week. I'll give it a week, give myself time to calm down. And so often, like, the majority of the time, I end up not doing it. And that was the case because I had good stuff, could have made a video, could have did all this stuff, and I didn't do it. And the person imploded on their own. And my hands was completely off of it, wasn't part of it. I wasn't near the scene of the accident. I wasn't near the crime scene, none of that stuff. So it worked out to be marvelous. And one of the things is, as a person, as an organic being, as a carbon-based life form, you're going to have some horrible feelings at times. You're going to say stuff in your mental space that you know is just totally messed up. You're going to do it. Talk to yourself. Like, okay. And, and, and say, you know, that is wrong. You know, that is, I was in a bar about four years ago, and I was with a friend, Zan, and this girl comes over, and the girl is, she's kind of ghetto, she's kind of ghetto, and I'm just sitting there, and I made a very elitist comment about this girl, who was kind of ghetto, that I did not know, and I checked myself, and Zan was there, and I was like, you know what, that's wrong, what I just said about her, it's wrong, I shouldn't be doing that, she could be a nice girl, whatever, then about 15 minutes later, she came over, and she was part of a crew, and they were doing like a documentary and stuff, and I was so wrong about her. But I learned to check myself. And it has been a great benefit to me because there's times that I want to say some stupid stuff. And I was like, I'm not going to do it. I want to do it. Can do it, but I'm not going to do it. And that level of introspection comes from being able to know that I can forgive myself. Because there's some of you out there, you've done stuff and you just can't forgive yourself. You feel that you must become a martyr. You must feel that you must bear this cross forever as if that's going to make it right. Um, and it won't. I'm going to tell you, you know, this was one of the early days of $2,500. I mean, <laughs> the early days to 30 days to $2,500. And it was about writing a letter of apology and uh, dealing with people. I had someone apologize to me recently for some long-standing ill stuff. Now, the thing is, I didn't ask for it, nor did I expect it. It came from a very honest place. It came from a very sincere place. I mean, it was very, very real. And the fact that I got that changed so much, like a lot of stuff dissipated. So if you have something in you that you've done wrong, apologize to the person, reach out to the person. They may not take it. I've actually apologized to people. I've reached out to people who just completely ignored it. But the thing is, you try. You really, really try from other space. Do it, and if they don't accept it, move on. You try, because that clears your mental space of that thing. Because the thing is, I want you to think of your mental space and your mental energy banks as slots. And say there's 30 slots, even though your mental energy and your mental stuff is infinite, there's 30 primary slots. So maybe there's 50, maybe 150, maybe it's 200. And say there's 200, and, and then out of those 200 spots, you have 100 filled with grudges, hate, bitterness. So you've got that, and that's energy. That's energy. It's very dark energy, and it's very draining energy. Like if you're ever having a fight or something, you know how drained you feel the next day or right after it? Because it's such a caustic energy. It's not like love. It's not like happiness. It's not, it's not even close. So in your middle space, you've got all that stuff there. Well, this is the secret. You can remove it. It doesn't have to stay there. You can remove it. And this is kind of like one of those things where we're talking about having the type of life you want. It's a choice. And many people feel that it's something that's put upon them when the onus is actually on the person to make the choice. And many people don't want to do the work of making the choice. And that's the thing. But in your energy banks, in your slots, all that negative stuff, you can remove. Now, once you learn how to forgive yourself, it becomes extremely easy to forgive others. If you find that it's extremely hard for you to forgive anybody, it's because you can't forgive yourself. It's because you can't move on from that spot. And once you get stuck, I want you to think about this. Going back to those 200 slots of your energy, your spiritual mental bank, that stuff has interest. It doesn't just stay there. 
it does two things. It either grows stronger or it dissipates on its own over a long period of time. But it's still in the spot. It's a placeholder. And if it grows worse, then it lowers your abilities to do more. Even it, It's just compounded reduction of personal power. So it's very, very important for you to learn how to forgive others. Truly forgive. Like, I forgive you and move on. Understand, this doesn't mean that, oh, you forgot what they did. It doesn't mean that you will ever trust them again. It means that you have cleared those spots where you can move on and have the best life you can have. Big, big problem. Going back to what I said earlier about me and uh, being where I was. If I knew what I'm teaching you right now, that little six-week period where I got laid off for the third time, then I got the job at Rent Crate, the things I did in six weeks, I could have did that at any time. But because I spent so much time hung up on the past, I robbed my future. I probably, when I look back, because you wake up, and I'll just paint the scene for you. I lived in this room. There was no heat. There was no air conditioning. Old room. I had a rickety bed. You know, some personal effects. The room had a desk, a little lamp. And I wake up, and every day I was reminded of how bad my life was because I wouldn't have been in that place if that event had not happened. So every day I was commiserating with my own misery. I probably put 25 to 35 percent of my of my personal energy into commiseration of of misery and things I could not change. And some days, 100 percent, like those days where you just sit around and you think about it, you think about it, you think about it all day long. You can't you can't focus, you can't think, you can do none of that stuff. I did that. And then something, Earl Nightingale, power of your subconscious mind, I started feeding my, my mind better food. And I was able to catapult, because I think I got Earl Nightingale maybe four or five months before I got laid off the third time. And I was listening to it, because the first few times, I didn't quite get it. You know, because Earl will tell you, listen to it 10 times each time you're going to pull more stuff out of it. I know I've listened to Lead the Field probably 150 times by now, if not more, from start to finish. So I was feeding my mind stuff and it was pushing past that and just dealing with stuff. But if I was able to get my mental space together earlier, what I did in those six weeks, I could have did at any time, point in time when I was in that boarding house for those two and a half years. The reason I didn't do it, I didn't have the right information. I didn't have the proper education. And when I got the proper education, my life changed. Because now that I know how to do this stuff, like just like you're a human, stuff happens, you know. I have a process on how to deal with this stuff now because I was laid out for two and a half years over the things that went down. Now, I may get pushed back a day or so. Or it might be a week, but the thing is, it never knocks me off my axis anymore. Because I used to get completely blown away. Just completely blown away by the stuff. And I wouldn't work. I would become despondent and I'd stay in bed and I'd pull the curtains over me, the, the, the covers over my head and just go, ah, oh, my life is horrible. That doesn't help you. That's just a recipe for long-term depression. Booyah! Now, <laughs> all that was to set you up for this. You're going to sell something to someone you hate. Friend, family member, there's someone in your family, someone in your circle you cannot stand. Everyone has this person. You're going to sell your service or something to that person. I know you're going, what? Now, I will go ahead and get some clarification. I don't do business with people I don't like or want to be around at this point. However, if someone provided a valid business opportunity to me, someone who screwed me, that I didn't really know that well, but I was able to protect myself, I would move forward. The old me... Oh, hell no. Are you kidding? I would spit on your, I would spit in your face if you was on fire. I wouldn't pit, all that other stuff. When it comes back to emotional management, if you can get a deal or benefit from that person and be protected and it goes through. Now, if you know, if you can't guarantee those things or you definitely going to put you in a situation where you get screwed again, no, you can't go forward. But I've done that uh, with this TV deal, um, the first show. I actually got screwed by the production company, screwed royally. 
Then they needed me again. This time, because I had that experience, because of the mistake, because I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't have the proper education, I was able to get a written agreement in play before I did anything, and I got a check before I did anything. So you can't let those bad experiences taint your perspective where you will chase money out of your pocket when if there's a way in the process that you can do it and be protected, you should go forward. Now, I've actually hired someone. I mentioned that guy in the video. I couldn't stand this guy, but he was excellent at what he did. Couldn't stand him. Couldn't stand, could not stand this boy. Francine had to him. But he improved our business. He improved our business. And there's exceptions. Like, you know, I gave you two of them. If there's some benefit, I'm at a point where I can put the emotion and stuff aside and uh, go do what I need to do. Now, when you gain a higher level of emotional management, new doors will open in your life. This isn't about selling out. This isn't about doing something you know you don't want to do. Like, say you have, uh, like, let's just look at the bull here. Say you're a vegan and there's this deal that comes up and it's going to be like you have to advertise meat products. Of course, you being a vegan, you're not going to do it. I'm not talking about, well, you know, I'm a vegan. No, I'm not talking about sacrificing your beliefs or compromising your beliefs. I'm saying if there's some stuff that's more on your side, like it's more like that kind of stuff and it doesn't compromise your beliefs and it doesn't compromise your personal code of ethics, then yeah, go for it. But you know, there's a lot of things that you can do when you get to a higher level of emotional management, a lot. Now this is going to get into the other task of the day versus selling something <laughs> to somebody you hate. <laughs> It's always a joy, always a joy. I want you to ask yourself, what is your most profitable item or service? And how often do you get it? Now, this is very, very important. Going back to when I talked earlier, one of the reasons I got rid of the blogs, because I looked at the data, I was actually expending time and energy into a hole that wasn't producing a return. You do that in your business. There's some things that you don't need. Now, this is more on the item because we did in the earlier days how to work on your process. This is more an item. You may have items that you like or you spent too much money for them. You've got to go in there and figure out what is the most profitable thing you have. How often do you get it? Like for me, I sell books, products, and services. So I don't really have an inventory issue. If I was selling, like, okay, I'll give you an example of something I used to sell. I used to hunt for a lot. was Herman Miller Air Runs. Because they were an easy sell. They bought them on eBay. They bought them on Craigslist. I once entered into a situation where, and this is where my commercial office furniture background really helped me. I found this guy and he had an empty building and there was like 400 air runs in there. Tricked out with the forward knee tilt mechanism. Those are, those are the fully, that's top of the line. And I had a contract with him and I was like selling those bad boys on consignment. And, you know, it was just awesome. And then after that, I started looking for them, sourcing them. It became a little bit more challenging. But I knew that I could make a lot of money with that chair at the time. It just, you know, it probably still sells well. So for your business, your process, you've got to find out what are you doing that makes the most money. And there's a reason for that. Now, I put this up there because this is a little side, side detour here, this little detour. Doesn't that guy look like the Terminator guy, the one on the front, the guy that just keeps walking, the one that morphed into all this stuff and he turned his hands, you know, he was he turned silver and he slid under the door, so it kind of looks like that guy. But anyway, you might need to get rid of some products. Um, this whole process is far different from, you know, activity. This is products. You, you're going to have to really, really work with products. Uh, there was a guy on YouTube who was really doing well. And he did a personal evaluation. He, and this is funny how people come to the same conclusion when they really look at their business. We got rid of eBay in 2006, meaning we outsourced it. You know, we didn't get rid of it. We stopped doing it. We stopped listing. We found four contractors to do all that stuff, the shipping, whatever. And we worked out a nice deal with it because it was a bottleneck. It really was. eBay was very time consuming. And I mean, it was just with the customer service issues and all this. We just had enough. So as you go through this process, you're going to figure out there's some things that you need to get rid of and there's some things you need to add. Now, there's your task. Monkey Kung Fu. I have a passion for 
Asian philosophy and martial arts, just probably part of my upbringing because every Saturday it was like Kung Fu theater and it was just very inspiring. Now your focus will be on the most profitable item for the next week. See, this is going to be a process. This is what I mean by this stuff is getting a little bit more intense. You're going to figure out what it is and you're going to focus on that. You're going to focus on it like you've never focused on anything else. You're going to hammer out the sourcing and distribution of that item. And if you don't have a business, because there are a lot of people who are taking this course who want to start a business, you're going to figure out your first product. And you're going to figure out if this product is worth getting. You're going to figure out if this product is worth selling. You're going to do all that stuff. And going back to day 14, you're going to use one of your power days to really press this hard. Because when you have the right product, like I'll give you an example. One of my clients did this. Um, guy was in Las Vegas. He was trying to do some stuff. He wasn't really feeling storage auctions, but he's like, hey, you know, I'm going to hire you for a consult. And we'll talk about it. And he just started telling me about his interest and stuff. And he was really, really good with cell phones. So we hammered out this thing because, you know, he was making about 150, 200 bucks a week on Craigslist. So many things that I'm giving you, I gave him. He actually did 1500 bucks from start to finish in one day on Craigslist. He sourced the phones on Craigslist and he resold them on eBay. He did that in one day. He got the phones, did what he needed to do, put them on eBay. Now, let's talk about that before I uh, recommend that. You have to be very careful with eBay right now. There's a lot of funky stuff going on that. So that's why you have to have other avenues. But just to show you, once you have a process, which you can do, because he made 1500 bucks. He was making $150, $200 a week. So he made in one day twice what he usually made in two months. That is the power of a process, focus, and methodology. Because he had pulled all of the chaff and the crap and all the stuff. All that stuff came out. It was just really, really down to the core. And most profitable, let's talk about what's your most profitable item. It's not like say you have an item you sell for a thousand bucks, but your margin is one fifty. Then you have another item that you sell for fifty dollars, but your margin is forty dollars. It's the fifty dollar item that's your most profitable, not the thousand dollar item. The thousand dollar is like, yeah, I sold this, you know, I sold ten of them and I made ten thousand dollars, but you only made uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand. Now that's cool if you're comfortable with those margins. That's cool. That's cool if you do that, but that's if you got a fifty dollar product where your margin is like forty dollars, which is like freaking eighty something, eighty two, eighty three percent. That's your high margin item, and you got to figure out how can I get this more, how can I sell it faster, and keep pushing, because you want to have some serious margins. Because as long as you play the price game on everything, you will lose a lot. In the beginning, you'll be winning because it's like, yeah, I was the first one to get to the bottom. Ha <laughs> ha! Then wait, boom, there's someone else. Boom, there's someone else. Boom, there's someone else. And next thing you know, you're at the bottom. Then the floor starts shifting. And next thing you know, the bottom goes even deeper. Don't play that game. Increase your value. Increase yourself. Increase your abilities because that is an ugly, ugly place to be. Okay, so now we will jump into the questions. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, let's see. This is from Deanna. Glenda, may I request to please forward your webinar invitation and link to your, your Facebook group to a friend? Um, now, the group is paid, so... That would they would have to go through Gumroad and get that. Uh, the audio is less. Please add volume. Uh, let's see. No, I think I adjusted that. When I started, the microphone wasn't real close to me. Uh, Michael, when you took on a partner for the storage auction business, how did you set up the money so the money isn't ripped up? Uh, my partner was extremely trustworthy. Never had an issue with that. That never. We had fights, but that never was one of them. I got extremely lucky. Uh, everything was very transparent. The books were open to everybody. The bank account had both our names on it. So that I got luck. I, I, I was very fortunate in that regard. Uh, Dwayne, mistakes are good. The bottom always has further, <laughs> has run. The bottom run is always has further up. He, she can reach. I can learn from more from one mistake than 10 experts can learn from 10 successes. Yeah, because success... You'd be like, oh, that went really good. You don't really, you, you get happy and you kind of miss some lessons of success. But when you get slapped, yeah, you learn that stuff. 
You found some money. Aaron found some money over there on the other side of the world. Cool. Richard, I'm a professional failure. So am I. I am. And I love it. Uh, how does one get added to your email list? There is a, a link on every video on YouTube. Just get the free audio book and you're on the list. Uh, Dwayne, can you elaborate more on dealing with emotional management? When I was a kid, I came across this Buddhist book, an Asian book, and it was talking about um, not getting too high, not getting too low. I didn't really know what that means. Because let's just say, I'll give you a great example. At the door, I bought this unit. It looked awesome. I was counting money before I even got in there. It looked awesome. I mean, there was just so, I mean, you could just see money. And there was no heavy hitters there, um, but there was a few new people with a little money, and I actually overpaid because I was just full of enthusiasm. I was like, yeah, I'm going to make money. And I was just high, and I was like, when I went up to pay, you know, I was just talking to people like, you know, giving me that. I'm like, yeah, you got the best unit of the day. I was floating on cloud 22. Go down there, take the lock off, get in the unit. It is one of the worst messes I've ever bought next to the $1,000 unit that I lost. The headboard was cracked. All of the dressers had scratch. They had incense marked. I mean, I paid 750 bucks, and if it wasn't for the new shoes and some other clothing items, that unit would have been a total bust. I actually made money, but I didn't make nowhere near as much as I thought I was going to make because I ended up throwing 50% of the unit away because of the damage. But it was just like really, really high, then bam, <laughs> crash. <laughs> I was just like, damn. So I learned that to temper my expectations until I really got into it. And it just helped me keep an even keel. Because a lot of people, I know, it's like, you're always happy. I kind of keep myself in a happy spot, you know, not so much the middle, remember toward the top end, because I like the energy. But you've got to really, really manage that. And if you're a person that's kind of manic and you get really high and really low, you, you really have to watch it. And what helps me is meditation, transcendental meditation. It just kind of keeps me more in the middle because... When you have those swings, they rob you of perspective and they rob you of energy and you get down. Because I literally got depressed at the end of the day. I mean, we got the unit set up. I just went home and sat down and watched the TV the rest of the day. I was just that out of it. Whereas if I had been more moderate with my expectations, I would have been fine. Hopefully that helps. Richard, I made a lot of money buying and selling Herman Miller on shells. Good, good deal. I did see the videos, but I didn't really, I mean, you know, it was kind of short. This is from Manny. He put up a video. Just keep making them. You're going to find your way. The more videos you make, the more creative you're going to become. Uh, David, can creative ad copy and switching up PR channels be a good defense against a product or service that is otherwise a race to the bottom? No. Not today. Um, what you can do is add value to that product. Let's say, just use a pen. Say there's a there's a pen you're selling, and the pen was going for ten. Then other people got into the pen. Then they were like, "Oh, now the pen's five bucks." You can do all the advertising, marketing, whatever. But if it's a popular item that everyone can get, the race to the bottom is hard to avoid because they're gonna figure that out by just going to Google and see what it is. So what you do is you take that pen and you add it up. It's like, okay, you're going to sell a pen in ink. Are you going to sell two pens? Are you going to sell a pack of pens? You will have to differentiate the product to prevent the race to the bottom. Uh, no. Earlier you mentioned a reseller who sourced phones and resold them on eBay. You had concerns with selling them on eBay. Could you explain a little bit more about your concerns in that area? I'm planning to source on Craigslist myself. Okay, but phones, phones are a high scam item because phone, phone is a necessary appliance right now. Phone used to be luxury, optional. Everyone has to have a phone. So you have a lot of fraud, you have a lot of chargebacks, you have a lot of game plan with phones. So eBay has set up where they will enable the scammer and also limits and stuff. But you can get your phones, you can put them up there, and 
the worst thing that could happen is you get scammed. And the next worst thing is they limit your account for 21 days, which means you won't get the money. They got the phone and everything. They left feedback. I think once they leave feedback, then they'll release your money then. But just know that eBay is extremely complicated right now. It's extremely complicated. I'm not going to say don't do it. I'm going to say be careful. Uh, MH, Glennon, huge thanks for constantly recommending the power of your subconscious mind by Joseph Murray. Because you know, entrepreneurs are usually stubborn. I'm halfway through and I already feel a difference in my life. God bless you. It's an awesome book. It's an awesome book. Uh, Chris, any insight on setting up a good sleep and work schedule? That's kind of really on you, kind of going by what works for you. Um, I'm an early bird and I don't sleep a lot. I sleep five hours a night. Pretty much, it's been like that for years. So I, I also learned that I'm one of the weird people that I can sleep five hours a night and actually function. I, I hear that's kind of rare. I guess I get that from my parents. Uh, Jasmine, are people really buying wholesale from China then selling for retail price on eBay? That sounds too good to be true. No, people do that on eBay, Amazon, and other sites. Yeah, they're doing that. Yeah, that's that's very real. That's not. I mean, the thing is. You got to have the money to buy it and, you know, and you got to wait for it to come there and then you got to put it and you got to sometimes store it at warehouses. There's a lot more to it. But, yeah, that's that's not a pipe dream. Dwayne, so when does the Creating Your Own Economy for Dummy books come out? I have to write that down. I don't know yet. I haven't thought that far yet. You're actually thinking way ahead of me on that one. But uh, that's a good one. Yeah, I would highly recommend Transcendental Meditation for anyone. It doesn't have anything about changing your religion or none of that stuff. It is an awesome way to increase your energy level, clear your mind. I mean, it is, it saved my life, just to be honest with you. It really did, because there was a time I would have lost it if it wasn't for meditation. I'm going to see if any more questions are in there because we're at 442 uh tony iso 7 apple phones have security issues activation lock is a new problem hard to diagnose and unfixed by the moment without the original owner just actually they they kind of like okay because actually I, I actually know about that and i know what you mean if a person sells a phone and doesn't like say it has a bad esm you know, you can get around that. You can just jailbreak it, flash it, put it in another service. But if the iCloud is locked <laughs> and they still have their old email address on it, you're screwed. You're screwed. Because what the person has to do is remove that phone from their iCloud backup. If that phone's like, okay, say someone resets the phone, right? But they still have that phone on their iCloud backup. The minute that person turns that phone up and starts going through the pumps, that iCloud's going to back up that phone which means they're going to have your information, <laughs> your email addresses, all this other stuff. But they may not, be, well, they may not be able to get in the phone because they won't be able to have the password against the iCloud. It can be, yeah, they, they wouldn't set it up, but no, they wouldn't have your information, but you won't be able to set up that iCloud without that password and email combination. Uh, Dwayne, that's how I feel now. Uh, Leslie Ann, I use uh, Quiet Mind. I actually, my word is focus. I use the word focus and I use numbers. Uh, Daniqua. Uh, I'm not sure if this was mentioned. I listen while at work, so sometimes I miss a lot. Any advice on getting started on eBay? Go to YouTube and just start watching Getting Started on eBay um, t videos. There is so much information out there for free that you could just learn more about getting started on eBay in four hours after you get off of this than you, you may want to know. High <laughs> dollar paperweight. Uh, Chris, you were involved in furniture sales at one point. Any advice on renting tables on how to get the best deal? Okay, renting what kind of tables? Like uh, renting tape banquet tables? Uh, Give me a little bit more information because there are places that rent furniture, but it's pricey. It's real pricey when you think about it. I will hold on a second. 
because a lot of times it's like questions come in in a group, like it'll be like four or five, they'll pop up at once, so there's somewhat of a, a delay. So I will hold on. But essentially, like furniture is a really strange thing because there's people making a ton of money with furniture right now, and there are people who are losing their asses with furniture. It's about positioning. Because so typically, you have high volume sellers and they're buying the furniture by the container load, which means they can sell it for less. So that's kind of hard to go against if you're in the new stuff market. Uh, Chris, renting tables suitable for flea market six foot long collapsible tables. I'm going to tell you to start buying a table a week or a table every two weeks and get your own. It's going to be cheaper. Because say you go to Walmart, they're like 38 bucks for one. So that's 38 bucks a month or 70 bucks a month. As you go out over a year, you will get your money back. And also, you can deduct the cost of those tables on your taxes. Hector, uh, what's the schedule for the next 15 days of this webinar? All right, good question. There will be one tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, since people were kind of getting behind, I'm no longer doing weekends. Weekends is the day that people can catch up if they are part of the group. So it will be nothing Saturday and Sunday, and I'll do Monday through next Friday, and then the week after that, it'll be Monday through Thursday, and that'll be the end. So, yeah, like I said, we, we are like, we're halfway there. Uh, David, let's say someone secretly replaced your apartment with a bunch of units filled from the roof to the tutor. Would you still do a Craigslist style blow out of state sale? What advice do you have for us pack rats? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, since I was going through a personal transformation and some other stuff at that point, I would do it differently now. Say my apartment was full of this stuff and I would still do the sale the same way because it was very successful because when you say absolute sale and everything's going, you get a lot of response. But yeah, I would still do it. That was very, very effective because you it has a certain finality to it that this is an estate sale, this is a moving sale for real, for real, we're moving on out, you, you just get a different kind of person. So I would still do that the same way. Good question. Uh, Chris, can the prices of the tables be deducted only if the business is registered? Wouldn't that require me to itemize? Mm, okay, you could do a business as a sole proprietorship and you could still write off the taxes. I would say get an account because this is one of the reasons I don't answer a lot of tax questions. It changes so much. Something you could have did two years ago you can't do now or it's changed or sometimes it gets better. You have to find a professional who deals with that stuff all the time because it's super complicated. But I think I can safely say that, yeah, you can write that off even if you're a sole proprietor. Now, if you're not filing taxes, no, you can't write it off. <laughs> no. All right, it's 447. I'm going to hop and wait in like 30 seconds. If another question doesn't pop up, I am going to close this out. I will say, let's see, because someone's, they're always asking. Let me go here. All right. Because people want to know, how do I sign up? How do I sign up? And we're going to turn that off. <laughs> Ooh, that's loud. Okay, if you want to sign up for anything, everything is under the last videos. Everything. If you haven't gotten a free audiobook, someone said, hey, how did I get on the email list? Get this audiobook and it will take you here. Okay, it will not. I will have to fix that. I don't know what the heck happens with that. Okay, I'll fix that. That was embarrassing, but it happened. Like I said, remember, mistakes, mistakes, they happen. They happen. Don't. All right. Let's see. Let's do this. This is where you can get the audiobook. Go to hustlersfood.com. And this is going to pop up. And since I've been there recently, it didn't pop up. There's going to be, ah, there it is. You fill in all that stuff, register, then you'll get the audiobook, and you will be on the email list. Okay, that's the end of the questions. Cool. All right, this is Glendon. I want to thank everyone for coming out. I really appreciate your time. I'll be here again 4 p.m. tomorrow to 5 p.m. And I will send out the invitations and everything. And if you want to join the group, the Facebook group, 
Now this will work, I know. Let's see. You can go there. Yeah, that works. And And then lifetime is your best deal because there's going to be a lot more going on after this is over. So all that works and you get a lot of stuff with that one. All right. Thank you for coming out and I'll see you on the good side. The organizer has ended the session and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.